I would say the problem I have been focused on for the last three or four years in my research um, is, is there something we could do that would speed up the pace at which we solve social problems? Asking whether there is something government could do differently about how it funds and collaborates with social service providers that would speed up the rate at which we discover uh, solutions, scale them up, um, prove that they work. I take recent graduates of, of public policy uh, schools and I put them on the ground full time either in the state budget office or in the governor's policy shop or sometimes out in an agency. For the last three years um, we've been uh, We've been helping all those states in blue. And then more recently, the Lyme states that we just started working with in the last six months. There are eight projects that have already launched in the U.S. Uh, where services are already being delivered, uh, funded by pay for success contracts. So the New York State project up there is the best one for, uh, really in the world for showing the full potential of this model. What's going on in New York is um, there are people who come out of state prison and uh, the underlying recidivism rate is something between 60 and 70 percent within two or three years. Uh, and the question is, could we do something to reduce that? So what the state did is it's written a contract with CEO that says, basically, we're gonna give you 500 people every year who come out of state prison. Uh, we're then gonna measure how those 500 people do in terms of uh, both employment and whether they come back to prison. Uh, if compared to the randomized control group, they actually, uh, the, the people served actually do have higher rates of employment and lower rates of going back to prison, uh, then the service provider gets paid. Uh, if they do not, then the service provider doesn't get paid anything. So what happens in these projects is that private investors actually provide the operating funds for the service providers and absorb most of the risk. From the government perspective, it's quite clear. They get a money back guarantee, they get a way to drive attention toward outcomes, uh, and they get a way to reorient the budget away from remedial costs of, say, people being incarcerated toward preventive services like job training up front. The thing that's good about this model for service providers is it gives them a stable way to scale up. I think the main thing we're achieving here is we've come up with a more effective way for government to collaborate with social service providers on a multi-year basis. So this is the actual payment schedule from, from New York State. 13% for the investors to get all their money back. And, you know, that, I would say that comes from basically the cost-benefit analysis. It's, it's, it's where this program was only cost-effective for people who had a very high probability of going back to prison. The intervention's pretty expensive there, $8,000 or so a, a person, and if someone only has a 10% chance of going back to prison, it's not cost-effective to give them this intensive uh, job training program. So the first thing we did is we used standard, you know, uh, pr predictive regression risk screening tools to figure out which 50% of the people coming out of New York State prison uh, had the highest risk of returning, and it's only those people who were getting referred to this provider. So first thing we did is we, we targeted a specific subpopulation that we thought was, was good for the service. The second thing is we didn't say to the service provider, go serve whoever you want within the subpopulation. We are giving them a list of 500 people and they have to go serve those people. They gotta actually make them show up for the job training, and they're getting paid on the outcomes for all 500 of those people, even if only 400 of them make it to the job training. So they now have an incentive to worry about that whole population and to make sure no one falls through the cracks. Again, very different than our typical way of funding social services where we pay for slots in the program and who knows what determines which people get services and which don't. So that's where we are in terms of projects that have gotten, gotten somewhere. And, and you know, I think you can see that the field is um, constantly evolving. And, and you know, I, would, I would say for our own work, what, mostly what we're doing now is projects that are harder than the initial ones. We started with the recidivism ones where it was like the same level of government. Now we're trying to do early childhood ones, you know, and that introduces a whole extra level of complexity.